This is a response to Rennie and Tom's uh, video from today or yesterday, their STS video about women competition prize money being the same as men's. Uh, I watched the video and I love you guys. And I wanted to make a little bit of a response. So as a little bit of an intro for people who don't know who I am, which is probably a lot of people at this point, uh, my name is Zach Cohn. I used to go by Happy Dud. I've been training for about 10 years, although the last couple of years I've been sort of out of it. I used to run the American Parkour front page. I started the community in Rochester, New York. I was on the board of directors of Parkour Visions. So I've been, I've been around a little bit. Um, so to start with, I'm not going to talk about feminism. I'm not going to talk about any of that sort of stuff. Uh, I want to take it from as like strictly logical and rational point of view about why you guys should reconsider uh, making male and female prize money equivalent. So I've got a couple of givens. I've got a couple of notes over here. I've got a couple of givens uh, that I want to go over to begin with to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, given number one, we all want more women in parkour. Given number two, we want more women in parkour competitions. And given number three, women are not magical time travelers. I think we can probably all agree that those three things are all true. So the first thing I want to talk about is the training gap that you guys mentioned. Um, until people start dying of old age, there will always be a training gap. Uh, you, you all compared a couple of guys who'd been training for 10 plus years to some women who'd only been training for like three and use that as a justification for why like they're just not there yet and they just don't deserve the same amount of prize money as the men who've been training for 10 years. And in seven years, when those women have been training for 10 years, those guys will have been training for 17 years. And so I don't think that that is an argument, like the training gap argument will always exist. And for that reason, I don't think you can use it to justify why women don't currently deserve more, uh, deserve the same amount as, as men. So the rest of this response, I want to take from a strictly economic standpoint. Um, you, you talked about, you, you sort of made a joke about how more money won't encourage more women to get into parkour so they can go participate in competitions and win more prize money. Like that, of, of course, like that's a ridiculous argument. No one's, no one is in the sport for the money. And if they are, like we should probably have a conversation. Uh, but the fact is that more prize money will encourage more high level women that we currently have in the sport to come out to competitions, either to any competitions or to more competitions or to your competition. Uh, and so if you're having trouble filling your women's competition bracket, you should just pay more. And if you increase the incentive to participate, more people will participate. So currently, if you're having five or six people and you're, you're talking about how some of them like haven't done speed courses before, or some of them haven't done competitions, or some of them are really just truly novices. Um, and then if you artificially increase the number of people to 20, then you'll have a lot of novices at the, at the bottom end. Like don't artificially increase it to 20 and let novices in, but increase the amount of money that you're paying as a prize. And there will be an incentive for the super high level people who don't come out to competitions as much to come out and compete. Uh, you'll get a stronger showing of high level women competitors. Uh, which is something that we want, and you'll create better competitions, which are more fun to watch, which is something else that you were talking about as a reason that you don't currently pay women more. And so ultimately, like this bit comes down to like a chicken or an egg, right? Do you want to have competitions, have w women competitions that are currently highly attended, highly participated in, and a lot of fun to watch and highly competitive, and then you will start paying more? Or do you start paying more because it will create all of those other things? I think you guys are approaching it from the first perspective, and I think you should be approaching it from the second. By paying more, you will create <clears throat> an environment that will rather quickly enable higher competition, more participation, and a lot more fun to watch. Uh, I think the other benefit is a long-term benefit by having a stronger female competition scene, <clears throat> excuse me, you will create more role models for young women, either current young new tresuces or women who might 
consider doing parkour or might not have considered parkour. But when they see lots and lots and lots more role models, then there's a much higher likelihood that they will get interested in parkour and they will come out and start to participate as well. And when you encourage more women to get into the sport, that's going to help solve the ultimately larger gender imbalances in the parkour community. So if we start now, in five years, there will be more women in the sport than we could ever imagine today. And this will be a largely moot point, right? Just like the old parkour versus free running, our flips parkour arguments of the mid 2000s, which let's not go back to. Uh, But if you wait until the women are a high enough level and there's enough high enough level women, it will take decades. There's a Zen saying that I really like, and I think it really applies here. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So I'm going to encourage you and all the other parkour competitions that I'm loosely connected with to not wait 20 more years to plant a tree, but to plant that tree today.